Hi, it's Jamie of Pandora Astrology here in Berkeley, California, along with... Hey guys, it's Julia Mijas and I'm in San Francisco. And today we want to talk with you about this new moon in Pisces happening here in February of 2020, which we've dubbed Imagination Fuels Ambition and Innovation. This particular new moon is happening in Pisces at four degrees of Pisces, so pretty early in Pisces. And uh, this moon has some uh, planets with it, particularly Mercury is retrograde in Pisces at the time. And, uh, and then also this moon has quite a bit of help, some harmonious connections with Mars right here in Capricorn where Mars loves to be, so that's going to be nice to talk about. And then also Uranus in Taurus. Now a new moon is about beginnings. It's about initiations. I always like to think of it as planting seeds for the future. You don't always see them developing right away because it's dark during the moon. You plant seeds in darkness and then they germinate and they grow. So it's a great time for starting stuff for that reason. <clears throat> this particular one being in the sign of Pisces is going to have themes of... Um, of imagination, of vision, of dream, of uh, spirituality, of those realms of the metaphysical rather than the physical. So these are beginnings that spring forth from our imagination. <coughs> and um, this lovely, lovely Mars in Capricorn, where Mars is at home and very happy to be, um, brings this theme of of drive and energy and ambition and, and wanting to climb the ladder of success, wanting to become excellent. Uranus, of course, brings in its themes of, of um, innovation, of the new, of um, pushing that cutting edge of what is known. Julia, what are your thoughts? I know you had some really interesting things to say about the role of that Mercury retrograde in Pisces as part of this moon. Yeah, well, just to begin with, the sign of Pisces, you know, it has a lot to do with creativity and, and artistic um, endeavors. Uh, it also has a lot to do with mysticism, too, you know, and also service and compassion and kind of giving yourself selflessly towards things. So if you identify with, with one of those over the other, you know, that's how you can personalize this uh, new moon for yourself. And having that Mercury so close to the combination and retrograde means that some some review is going to have to take place in any of these processes. So right. perhaps it's, you're, you're, you're reviewing the way you give service, or perhaps you're reviewing your um, creative endeavors, or uh, maybe your spiritual path in some way. Um, so, mm. so some amount of that is taking place, but I mean, it's just so awesome to have that minor trine, which means two sextiles instead of two trines, um, with the planets Mars really strong in Capricorn and Uranus uh, in Taurus. So there might be some reviewing going on, but after you go over what you have to go over, you know, you've got some drive uh, and some innovation also um, to help you out. Yes. <clears throat> Let me uh, see if I can draw a line. Yeah. This is what a minor trine looks like. It includes two planets in a trine with each other, but also uh, another planet placed between them right here at sextiles to both. So that's what a minor trine is, and it's a really nice harmonious configuration. Um, so Julia, I remember you talking about, um, that Mercury is, uh, in a, a very uncomfortable place being in Pisces and that it's not all sunshine and roses when Mercury is retrograde to begin with, but then place it in Pisces and, uh, it's, it's not necessarily easy. Sure. You know, so certain uh, planets have signs which they have a little bit more challenge with than others um, because the function of Mercury being the mental planet is to be precise and to be detail-oriented. Yeah. And that's really different to the nature of Pisces, which is much more globalized, much more generalized, um, and, and maybe less rational in a lot of ways, too. Absolutely. Um, so, I tend to notice that when Mercury goes retrograde in signs where it has some trouble, which is what traditional astrologers describe as detriment, but 
I'm not such a fan of that word because even plants in detriment can work for you in the right ways. They're That's just true. You have to kind of work on the fit a little bit more than you do other planets that express themselves more strongly. Um, so yeah, it, it they it can. I think those time periods uh, tend to be like you know Mercury retrograde on steroids a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it might be there might be some confusion, there might be some mystery, there might be some of that you know. Neptune quality of uh, because Neptune rules Pisces uh, of of being things being in a holding pattern where you're waiting for something and maybe you just don't even know what you're waiting for you know you'll know when it's ready but you don't exactly know when that's going to be yeah. that's a very Pisces feeling and yeah that okay. vagueness that yeah mystery oh my gosh so organization where did I put that <laughs> things kind of slipping through. <laughs> Years a bit, right. yeah, all of that. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, because this moon is happening at four degrees of Pisces, um, people who have planets in Pisces are really going to feel it. And, um, hmm, you know what? These dates are wrong. I'm going to change this. Basically, if you have something in zero to four degrees of Pisces, but also like as far into Pisces as about nine degrees, you're going to feel this. I had put some notes on here, but they're wrong. I'm going to take them out. Um, so if you have something in basically zero to nine degrees of a mutable sign, you're really going to feel this. And I'm going to take this little box out. This is what the mutable signs are, Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, and Sagittarius. And the reason is that <clears throat> this moon hitting four degrees of Pisces, well, obviously, if you have something near to it in your chart, that part of you is going to feel this transit. But even if you have something across from it in Virgo, around four degrees of Virgo, that part of you is going to feel it. And similarly, things around four degrees of Sagittarius or Gemini. So mutable people of the world, beware. This might be a very confusing new moon. But still, if you sink into it and you relax your mind and maybe stop thinking so hard and just let yourself float and drift in your imagination, you might find that some pretty nifty new seeds get planted before it's over. So that's what we have for you today. <clears throat> you can find more great stuff like this on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. We organize our playlists together uh, around months. Uh, so we put the news of the month into a single playlist. And we also put horoscopes on our YouTube channel. So check those out. And we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.